<laughs> there was no vlog yesterday because I had a family day and, uh, and it was absolutely wonderful and other than seeing family we were incredibly busy uh, and so I just didn't get time to pick up my phone and, uh, and record so sorry but not sorry it's the end of July and we're heading into August and uh, so I think it must be time for a fairly quick homestead tour the mini orchard at the front of the house in the front garden well the <laughs> the apples are doing really well and they're coming along and over there the pear tree is the pear tree is brimming with pears cherry tree over there well that's done its thing i've got a, a pint of cherries from it and the other apple tree it's got loads of apples on it but yet again it's got black spot or scab or something and uh, I haven't worked out yet how to how to deal with it look at the poor poor things Let me see up here it's a shame but it does have plenty of fruit on it and if I can work my way around the around the nasty skins they should be fine on the inside I hope. So we've had a big change around with uh, which poultry is where and in the covered run that did have the Brahmas in it the Brahmas have been moved out and on a temporary basis we've popped some cream leg bars in there. Here they are completely unimpressed at being shut inside a pen but they are about to go to a new home. Oh and that little chair is there just to stop the door from opening because despite the fact that we've had this here for nearly a year we still haven't put a catch on the door yet <laughs> and the ducks are doing okay there no change there they're all happy in the food forest well everything's looking rather lush and I'm beginning to see what it might look like in a few years time. The squashes that I planted here, uh, I think one's a turk's cap and the other one I think, I think is a giant pink banana squash. But look, 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 I'm so happy under this leaf. It's coming, it's, uh, it's about 10 inches long and we've got lots of them. There's lots of little squash coming. The annual vegetable garden is chock-a-block with food. Um, I'm doing lots of harvesting uh, and storing. So here we've got sweet corn. Oh, please excuse the little scarecrow. Here we've got sweet corn and it's uh, way above my head and it's uh, doing its flowery thing. And then down here, look at that, that is going to be a sweet corn. In fact there's three on that plant. And tomatoes in the background there. They're doing really well. We're getting tomatoes on that. And the beetroots are huge. And the balotti beans. Well I haven't planted dwarf beans before so I had no idea how they'd be. Well I'm rather pleased with them. The plants are just covered in beans well, I also seem to have a Monty plant as well hello sweetie what a good chap yeah are you gonna come and help me are you well th no you're not gonna come and sit on me we're going for a walk come on good boy so there are more beans in the first bed there and a little bit of corn at the end uh, the potatoes are doing really well. I'm now lifting those and starting to store those. These beans are the uh, Greek Gigantes beans. So they're the ones that we leave on the plant until they're completely dried and then we store the, the beans and you don't eat the outer pod. And uh, I think they're being very nicely demonstrated by Monty there by the look of it. 
Um, so yeah, they're doing really well. Masses of flowers of that on those, and uh, and then we just have to wait for the bean pods to arrive. Beyond the Greek gigantes are some uh, climbing balotti beans, and they're looking fairly good too. They're beginning to yeah, they're beginning to come. They're quite a way behind the dwarf ones, but they were planted much probably about. Mm, I don't know, the best part of a month after the dwarf one, so I'm not surprised they're behind uh, in this bed. Oh, that's all leeks and uh, at various different stages of having been put in. So the ones that are upright were put in earlier than the ones that are still collapsed. Uh, but the ones that look collapsed, they'll stand upright in the next few days. And this, <laughs> this messy pile of, of leeks here are the ones that are still waiting to go into the ground. Parsnips, yeah, they're doing fine. The first of the uh, brassica tunnels is now bursting with kale and savoy cabbage. Hmm, over here, the ducks are behind that tree and what they're doing is they're eating all the fallen plums. <laughs> So uh, hopefully they haven't started fermenting and we won't get the drunk duck syndrome again. But uh, yeah, <laughs> they're all eating the <laughs> they're all eating plums, and they almost look guilty. The runner beans that are behind me here, they don't look like they're doing very well. But actually, they've got masses of flowers and lots and lots of bumblebees visiting them. Hello bumblebees, but they've also got, uh, they have got a vast number of beans on them and I've been gathering about a pound to a pound and a half a day and, um, and that will just increase. So despite the fact my framework didn't hold up to the wind very well, the beans, well, they're doing really well. This is a second crop of beans in this bed. Uh, it had the broad beans and onions in it previously and I grew these these plants in modules in the greenhouse to start them off and brought them out here and there's, there's three different types of beans they're just starting to flower so fingers crossed that they come before well before the frost do I'm sure they will and this brassica tunnel had uh, some broccoli and cauliflower uh, some January king cabbages and some spring cabbages in it and well they're doing really well as well the old fruit trees that were here when we moved in are heaving. We've had masses of little damsons from the trees along here. And now this one is a mirabelle plum. And this one's a mirabelle plum. And then the one in the middle. The tall one is a Victoria plum. And the mirabelle plum, well, that has, that has plenty of fruit coming. Likewise with the Victoria plum, but they're still so high up out of reach, I can't get them. And by the time they hit the ground, they've got soft and bruised and, uh, and the ducks get to enjoy them. So I am getting a few uh, plums. I've had maybe six or seven pounds so far, uh, but not nearly as many as I could have uh, if I could reach them. 